the last video we um, downloaded the GBM data from the GBM catalog, the LAD data from the LAD catalog, and then we downloaded the LAD data from GTBurst in order to perform the operation of creating the XML file for the analysis that we will be doing further. Um, we, as stated as well, the GTBurst it can also be used to view the detector angles from the source. We will do both of these particular things in this video. So let's first uh, load the data from directory. I've changed, uh, I have moved the data in GPO folder uh, from the previous video to this particular folder 19.0.1.4873 which was created by the GTBurst tool itself. We load it and as you can see it um, shows the angular separation between each detector and the source but for now we will only load the LAD data okay uh, before we proceed to, uh, in making the XML file we need to look at the navigation plots let's zoom in into some of this area as you can see that this is the red line which is the zenith cut standard zenith cut at 100 degrees this green patch determines the 10 degrees radius of interest for us then there is 12 and then there is 15. what we want to know is that what should we use as the zenith angle and what should we use for this particular grb but to know that we need to determine the t90 duration for this um, first where the observation has started and where the observation has ended for the GBM. For that, we can consult the GBM catalog again. This particular um, thing, the T90 start and then the T90 duration. So let's check out where do we need to end the observations. So we need to start from 0.704 and we need to end at 117.058. Hundred and seventeen is somewhere around here. Let's zoom in again. As you can see that the um, 10 degree radius of interest is not quite below the red line or the standard zenith cut but if we extend our zenith cut to 105 somewhere around here you can see that we might be able to get the 10 degrees radius inside of it so we can use the zenith angle 105 and the radius of interest as 10 let's keep that in mind close this let's now make like your analysis the radius of interest, as you said, will be decreased to 10 and the Zmax will be increased to 105. The instrument response function IRF will be taking it as the default P8 transient 0 to 0 E. And then for the start time, we know that it is 0 0.704 and then 117.058. We take the other values as standard and run the GT burst. Now we can see that there are 247 events in the count map out of which 87 are in good time intervals. Let's click on next, change the FGL mode to fast because we do not want a cluster of things that do not particularly affect the observations for this uh, GRB. Let's run it. It says it has kept one point source from the FGL catalog. It means that it found one particular case of a source that can possibly contaminate the uh, data that we will be dealing with. Let's click next and run and let's save this. Okay, done. Now at this point, the XML file has been created and we can just um, like remove the GTBurst from the equation right now. Let's move on towards the home and this is the 
XML file. This is the um, cut file. Let's move it over here. We can use it later on. The next thing that we want to do is um, to generate the correct response and response file on the particular right essential definition provided by that. Now in order to generate the response and response to files for the GPM for the LAT corrected uh, right essential and definition, we use a small script named RSP and RSP2 file generator script. Uh, but in order to use that, we need the GPM data. In particular, we need the fit files for the detectors. Just take that. Then we need the PHA files for the detectors, but we only need for the C spec file. Uh, this one is also. And last but not the least, we also need to the treat and tcat files. Let's copy them over here as well. Okay. The RSP file uh, 56.57 and oops, negative 26.99. So it is now creating the response files. Okay, we have successfully generated the response and response to files for our GRV. Now moving on, we will now perform the LAT analysis on the LAT data that we have put up here for a while now. For that, we need an additional script. And the additional script is this GRV analysis code for the time interval. Let's just open it up. Okay, so here we need the source name, we need the right extension, we need the definition, ROI, source radius, Zmax, and there are some other bunch of stuff that we need. So let's go on and fill the code. Now one thing that should be noted here is that the source name is in the letter format, however our XML model is not in that format, so let's correct that. And also, the source model file, the XML file, should be of this particular format. Now, it is not necessary that it be this, but the code is implemented for the XML file to be in this format, so let's just not try to make errors in this. Let's just convert this GRB C model clear to dot xml then we will edit this again with the notepad text editor so let's change it over here as well grb c just for verifying we have put 54.57 as right ascension and negative 26.99 as its definition. So let's just move on with the analysis. We will do what 190114 c for the right ascension. We need 56.57 for right ascension definition. We need 26.99. The ROI uh, from the GTverse video, it will be 10. The RMAC, ZMAX will be 105. The TI, which is the, um, the MAT time here, is this. The T1 is 0 
correction here we since we will be dealing with the gvm data in rnfit and rnfit by default takes the time as multiples of 0 0.00464 so we might need to recalculate out the 05 and 95 let's just do that so this is exactly divisible This is slightly not divisible, so let's just multiply this and 0 0.56. This is done in order to not um, have discrepancy between the data that we will be using in GBM through RFID and in the LAT as well. Now that we have fixed the time issue, there is uh, now the event file. The event file should be in a text format, whatever it is, and the spacecraft file should be of this format in order to uh, in order for the code to pick it up. So let's open the terminal. see the event file is now printed over here now let's change the spacecraft file to sc.fits uh, come back to our terminal and now we will run the Python code Okay, with this we have finally generated the um, that PHA, uh, RSP and BAK file that will be used in the analysis uh, powered on. In the next video we will see how we can constrain the um, GPM data in time domain, in energy domain, how we can print the background, and how we can save the lookup files, how we can read them using the RMFIT software.